Hello, this is the first video for the fall 2022 semester for COM 345. So this is advanced program design with C++. So in this first video, I'm just basically gonna introduce what is the course all about, how it's organized, how it's graded and so on and so forth. So let me um, share the screen here. And let's quickly go to the beginning. So all the slides are um, on the course webpage. Or maybe I should explain how it's organized for the course webpage. So this is the course webpage that I maintain. This is not the Moodle, but this is my own webpage. It's a public webpage. So if you go to your Moodle page, you'll find a link to this um, to this web page. Um, all the lecture slides and all the videos are stored on this web page. If you click on some of the links on the Moodle page, it's going to download from this web page. So all of it, you don't have to worry about it. You don't find more information on this web page compared to Moodle. If you want, you just use uh, Moodle. Uh, so here you will find all the slides, all the link to all the videos, as I will explain today. Uh, the handouts uh, will be uh, stored here, as well as available on the Moodle. So this is actually what we will cover in this course here, along with all the material. If you want to have a link to the course outline, it's here. Uh, this is the schedule for the course. Uh, so I'm teaching both lecture D and lecture N. So we have a total of about uh, 200 students. This is a very high number of students, but uh, in the latest years, I've been used to that. Uh, there is plenty of markers and lab instructors also associated with this course to help you. Uh, the way I've set it up, uh, it's going to be... Uh, so I'm gonna post the videos. Uh, I'm gonna assume that you listen to the videos according to the schedule that, I, that is here. Uh, so this is all the videos that you will have to, you will be assumed to uh, listen to before coming to the lecture, okay? So during the lecture, I'm not repeating everything that is said on the videos. I'm assuming that you already listened to the videos. Then we have some discussions. Well, first I'll start the, every lecture uh, by uh, you know doing some kind of sum up of what is the uh, next material to be covered to make sure that uh, I highlight the important things for you to understand uh, and give some more explanations if some of you uh, require some explanations. But I'll do some kind of sum up during the lecture time, assuming that you have listened to the videos already. The way I chose to do it, well, we have two lectures per week. One of these two lectures is gonna be a, a live Zoom session. So you just connect to Zoom using the synchronous uh, uh, links, the, oh, sorry, the links to the synchronous Zoom sessions. Uh, synchronous meaning just basically that it is uh, interactive. Okay, so it's just like a regular lecture. Uh, I'm going to be standing here or in my uh, uh, office uh, at the university. Here, this is my home. Uh, I'm just going to be standing here and be giving you a lecture um, on Zoom. And then we're going to have some discussions. Then for the other lecture, um, I'm going to be uh, in person in the lecture room. So for a sec uh, lecture D, it's going to be H420 and lecture N, it's going to be H435. So for lecture D, the Thursday uh, lecture is on Zoom and the Tuesday lecture is uh, in H420. For lecture N, for section N, uh, the Monday lecture is going to be on Zoom and the Wednesday lecture is going to be in H435. So it's going to be exactly the same kind of thing, except that for one of them, I'm actually be uh, going to be on Zoom. Um, yes, OK. So let's go back to, um, or maybe I'm going to show you a sample of the uh, Moodle page. So essentially, it's about the same 
uh, thing as you have on the same information here as you have on the web page. And then here for each of the different weeks, you have links to the slide sets and the videos and so on and so forth. So don't worry, again, I'm making sure that everything is synchronized between uh, the Moodle page and the web page. If you want, you just be concerned with the Moodle page. You don't have to be concerned about the web page. Uh, okay, one thing that I want to attract your attention to, especially for the first week, uh, you have group self-selection here. So in this course, as I will explain later today, uh, there is is a uh, project. Uh, it is a group project. I know some of you don't like groups, but the reality, the hard reality is that we have 200 students. We simply don't have enough, uh, uh, you know, markers to uh, grade 200 projects. So that's why we need to have uh, be working in groups. And let's face it, in real life, um, programming happens uh, in groups in the vast majority of cases. So you have to learn how to deal with that. I'm allowing you to choose your teammates. That's why you can go to group self-selection here and then essentially uh, register yourself to a group. I would strongly suggest that you discuss with uh, people that you already know uh, and then um, after you, you have discussed with people that you want to form a team with, then you come here and you each register yourself into one of the uh, empty team slots here. So you will have until, as is said here, I believe, yes, you have until September 16 to form the teams. Okay, okay so let's go to... Okay. So my name is uh, Joey Paquet. So I've been a prof here at Concordia, Computer Science and Software Engineering Department for um, almost 25 years now. Uh, so what are my teaching topics? Everything related to uh, programming languages, uh, either the use of programming languages or the implementation design of programming languages. Uh, my research is mostly also on programming languages, uh, most particularly on um, programming languages that you can use in a parallel uh, uh, or distributed computing uh, context. I'm doing also demand-driven computation, context-driven computation, so on and so forth. Uh, so this is the link to my webpage. This is my email address. You may encounter some other email addresses uh, from Concordia. They're all pointing to the same uh, address, which is uh, this one that I've listed here. This is my office uh, number. I will be in this semester uh, very often in my office because I'm teaching every day except Friday. And on Fridays, I have meetings. So I will be in my office uh, quite often during the semester. You may pop in as any time you want, uh, hoping that I'll be there. But if you want to make sure that I'll, I'm, I'm going to be there, uh, you just come to my office hours on Mondays from 10 to 12. Uh, so yes, this is going to be on Zoom, uh, but I'm going to be in my office doing the Zoom session for the office hours. So if you pop in in person, I'm going to be there and I'll be going to be able to discuss with you. So this is the uh, calendar description of the course. Not going to go into details uh, uh, over that. Uh, one of the things that's in the, uh, important to understand is that you know this is a generic definition of what are the topics covered. Uh, over the years, I made some choices. Uh, it's not necessarily that you have to expect exactly that this this is exactly what is going to be covered because it's 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 changing uh, as I, as I'm going. Uh, so, okay, so why is it that uh, we need to have such a course? Well, it's not a um, mandatory course. 
uh, but it happens to be uh, quite a popular course. Now, the thing is that uh, when, what we do in this, what we chose to do in our department is to use Java as the main language uh, learned for programming. Uh, that was a choice that we made. Uh, I kind of agree with this uh, choice. Java is um, easier to learn, you might say, um, when you start uh, programming. Now, you may uh, not agree with that, but there are other languages that are also easy, but that's the choice we made. Now, the reality is that uh, C++ is a very uh, popular language. Not necessarily that it's a better language than Java or easier language than Java, quite the contrary, as we will see in this course. But C++, the reality is that it's been used extremely extensively in the industry. And because it's been used extensively, people continue to use it. Uh, first of all, because there is so much code that has been written in C++, and it's there and has to be maintained and continue developing and so on. So if you go to work in the industry, there is a lot of C++ out there. So that's why it's a good thing to be able to uh, use C++. Um, one of the things is that, well, there is also things that you cannot do in Java that you can do in C++. Uh, there's disadvantages to Java, uh, mainly it's using a, a virtual machine. Um, uh, it has garbage collection, which uh, does not enable it to be used for certain uh, uh, areas such as uh, uh, embedded systems or more particularly uh, real-time systems. So there is some applications that cannot be done in Java uh, that uh, are more likely to be uh, doable in C++. There is also some application areas that have predominantly been done uh, using C++. So that, um, that creates some kind of tendency for people to actually use this language in uh, some of these application areas that I have listed here. Uh, if you know a little bit about uh, C++ and you already know Java, uh, you will see that it's, it's syntactically speaking, programs uh, somehow look the same. Uh, but that's uh, very deceptive. Uh, there's a lot of things that, uh, that uh, how things work in C++ is quite different from how they work in Java. So yes, yes, there are classes, there are methods. So you might think because there are classes and methods that it works the same way. Actually not, it's not working in the same way at all, uh, which actually uh, may lead you to be confused. If you understand how Java works, how to use Java, you might think, well, I'm gonna know how to use C++ because it uses the same concepts, the same abstractions, uh, but uh, not so. So that's why in this course, I'm going to, yes, explain to you how to use C++. But if you want to use C++ properly, you have to know how it works behind the scenes or under the hood, as I uh, often say. That's why in this course, we're going to spend quite some time uh, you know, explaining how actually things work internally when you execute a C++ program so that you have a better understanding of how to use the language. It's, you know, it's easy to, that's one of the things about Java, it's easy to use Java, you don't necessarily have to understand how it works. For example, Java uses garbage collection. You don't have to know how garbage collection works in order to use Java. But the, the reality is because there's no garbage collection in C++, then you must do your manual uh, memory allocation and deallocation. Uh, some memory allocation and deallocation is done automatically, some is not. Uh, when it is not, then you have to understand how it should be done properly, or you are creating troubles in your, um, in your programs, for example, like having memory leaks and so on and so forth, which barely uh, exist uh, in Java. So there is a lot of things in C++ that are a hassle 
compared to Java. And because they are a hassle, you have to understand how they work and how to use these features properly. Yes, they are a hassle, so you need to learn the concepts and the implementation so that you can use this properly. Um, so the way it will work, I'm going to basically teach you what are the uh, programming concepts implemented in C++ or a selection of them. Uh, and then I'm going to give you a project, which is going to be divided in three different assignments, which you're going to tackle in a team. Uh, and then I'm going to basically ask you to use uh, uh, programming features that I've explained in class. So the and the, these teams are to be undertaken by teams of five, exactly five. As I uh, hinted at before, if you go to the Moodle page on top, you will have you will find group self selection. Just click there and then start forming a team. You will have to form a team uh, before uh, September 16. If you don't have a team after this point, then I will assign teams. So if I have still have some teams that are incomplete by uh, September 17, and then I have some people that don't have a team yet, I'm going to start putting the people that don't have teams into the incomplete teams. Or even if I have, for example, a bunch of teams of two, then I'm going to start merging teams. So you see here that if, <laughs> uh, if you don't form your teams by uh, the end of sep September 16, you will be placed with people that you don't know or do not possibly agree to be with. Okay, That's okay. another uh, hard reality here. So if you want, don't want this to happen and you really want to choose the people you will be in, uh, in a team with, uh, you have to do so by the end of September 16. So there's going to be three different assignments. So it's essentially going to be done at the project. So it's a project that is divided into assignments. Each of the assignments is essentially a, a, a build or an incremental development mode that is used to deliver the project. For each of the assignments, you will have to do a demonstration on Zoom with a marker. You will have a quite extensive uh, list of uh, things that must be implemented. So you will be given a very detailed uh, um, grading scheme for each of the assignments uh, at least a week before the assignment uh, is due. And then during the assignment uh, due date, then you will have a schedule that is going to be given to you. And then you're going to select one of the time slots that are available by the markers. And then you're going to then meet with the markers at this specific time. And then you do your presentation according to the grading scheme that you were done, uh, that you were uh, given. Very important to understand that these are going to be very short uh, presentations. So you're going to be given something like 12 minutes to do your presentation. Very important that you come on time and prepared for the presentation. Okay. Kind of easy to prepare yourself because you're going to know you're going to have the, exactly the list of things to, to be presented. But you will you will see that there's a lot of things to be presented in such a short time frame. So it's, it's important that you come on time and you come prepared for the demonstrations. Uh, next thing on my slides here is uh, so you might know that our uh, programs are accredited. So when you have program accreditation, so that means that, uh, among other things, that there are uh, what is called graduate attributes that are assigned to our courses. So that's basically saying that there are some skills that we teach in the courses and that these skills are taught and evaluated during the courses. This is the list of uh, graduate attributes that were assigned to this particular course. Uh, knowledge base, which is the most uh, simple, uh, is basically that you are uh, gathering some uh, information as you are um, taking a course, of course. Uh, so that's the basic one. And then as 
is stated in the course uh, title, in fact. A second attribute is design. So it's called uh, advanced program design with C++. Um, so how, how we teach design in this course? Well, first of all, for example, I'm going to be uh, teaching you how to use uh, some design patterns. So um, that's, that's how we introduce design in this course. Uh, the way I will deliver the project, I will make it so that there is, you know, you will be bound by a certain structure that I will state in the uh, project description. So it's not necessarily that you will have to do your own design, but you will have to abide with a certain design that I'm imposing in the project. I then use of tools. The tools that we're using in this course is C++ language, some libraries. Uh, you may want to use, I strongly suggest that you use a Git repository uh, to manage your, uh, uh, your code, though that's not a requirement of the course. Uh, it is a, a um, course where you deliver uh, some uh, code uh, in particular in a team. So there's individual and team work that is exercised in this course. And then you have to do a presentation for each of your deliveries. So that also includes communication. So that's it for the graduate attributes. Then let's go to uh, the evaluation. That's probably the most important part of, uh, of this talk here. What is it? How is it that I'm gonna evaluate you in this course? Uh, so there's uh, three different things. So there's a midterm, there's a final, which is divided in two parts, and there's the assignments or the project. The midterm is worth 20%. The final examination is divided into a written examination, which is or will be uh, in very much the same format as the midterm. So the midterm is some kind of, you might say, rehearsal for your final examination. They're going to be very similar, except that the, the final is going to cover all the material of the course. Uh, the, uh, both of these exams will be done um, as a Moodle quiz. For the final examination, there's the written part, as I just said, and there's also a programming exam. Programming exam will be done in the lab, and this is uh, also to be done using a Moodle quiz, except that for the programming exam, you're going to have to, as it says, uh, do some programming. I'm going to give some more details about that later. So there's essentially uh, three separate exams that you're going to have to write. They're each going to be administered using a Moodle quiz. Uh, and then there's the three assignments, uh, each worth 10% uh, each. For the grading of the assignments, these are team assignments. Everybody in the team will receive the same grade. Okay. Um, oh yeah, for, for the, uh, the final examination, the written part of the final examination is 35%, and the programming part is 15%, for a total of 50%. There is uh, additional conditions to pass the course. So you must have overall the total of all your numeric grades weighted uh, according to this uh, scheme here. You must have more than 50%. Uh, it's not because you have very high assignments and then you have below 50 that you can pass though. You must also pass the final examination. So this 50% here, you must have 50% of this 50% in order to pass the course. So even if you have very high assignments and you still don't have more than 50% in your final, you may fail the course. And you must also conversely have uh, higher than 50% for your assignments. So there's three additional conditions for you to actually pass the course. Now, how do I give the letter grades? Um, so essentially what I do is I'm using uh, some kind of bell curve to uh, determine what is the relationship between numeric grades and um, letter grades. 
Uh, so there's different meaning of curving. A lot of students talk about curving. A lot of students don't like curving. Uh, there is one kind of curving which I'm not going to do, which is to actually use some kind of formula to alter the numeric grades so that they abide to the uh, regular uh, letter grade uh, scheme that you may find in the calendar, for example. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm giving you numeric grades. These numeric grades will never be altered. What I am going to do is that at the end, I'm going to have a bunch of numeric grades, and then I'm going to use some kind of formula to figure out, out of these numeric grades, what are those that correspond to A plus, A, A minus, and so on and so forth. Okay, And this will tend to somehow uh, form some kind of uh, uh, normal curve, where the, the top of the curve is around uh, B, B minus or something like this. Okay. We can talk about this in class in person uh, later on. <clears throat> I'm sure we will talk about this. That's one of the things I want to make sure that people understand in class before we start. So I already said some of these things here. I'm gonna go faster here. So for the lectures, how are the lectures organized? Well, there is uh, online asynchronous mode, which is basically I'm giving you a list of videos and I'm assuming that you listen to the videos. If you go to the Moodle or to my webpage, it's gonna tell you what are all the videos to listen to for a specific week. Okay. So your duty here is to go over these videos and listen to these videos. The videos are exactly geared with the slides that you can also find uh, on the Moodle and the web page. So I'm assuming when you come to class, don't assume that when you come to class that I'm going to repeat all everything that's on the videos. I'm going to sum up the important, what I figure is the important things uh, to, to, to attract your attention onto. Uh, so that's why I would assume when you come to class that you have already listened to the videos and hopefully will come prepared with some questions, which I will gladly answer. If there's no questions, I'm just going to do my thing and, you know, try to highlight uh, the important parts. Uh, not that there's some parts that are not important, but that that's some of them are more, let's say, problematic. So I'm going to try to spend some time re-explaining the prob problematic things or the more problematic things covered in the lectures. Then, well, that's where we have the online uh, uh, synchronous uh, uh, mode, um, uh, which also is, uh, I, we will have also, as I explained earlier, there will be one of the two lectures which is going to be on Zoom and one of the two lectures that is going to be in person. I figured that some people like to be on Zoom and some people like to be in person. So that's uh, kind of trying to satisfy both of these crowds here. So there's gonna be online uh, interactive lectures and in-person lectures. Both of these, these two lectures is gonna be, is gonna be feel the same, except one of them I'm gonna be online and one of them I'm gonna be in front of you. The labs, um, so you're going to also have for the labs, you're going to have what the, for the labs, what happens in the labs is that uh, I prepared some example programs that are either I'm using on the slides and in the videos, and I'm explaining on the slides and the videos to you know, uh, um, exemplify the material that I'm covering. Uh, and there's also some additional examples that I've designed over the years. I've put all of these examples for each as we go. Uh, there is a, a zip file that you will find on, on the, the Moodle and my webpage. Um, as we go, there is a sequence of zip files that are uh, containing the C++ program examples that relate to what we're currently covering in the class. The goal of the labs is to essentially explain to you in more details 
these examples that you will find in these zip files. One of the lab instructors every uh, week will be tasked with producing a video describing each of these uh, uh, the material for the week. <clears throat> so you will have a video and then you will uh, the, the, the lab instructors will all be uh, present uh, in person in the lab. Okay. So for the labs, it is not going to be like a, a Zoom lab and a in-person lab. The difference is that it's, you're going to be given a video, plus there's going to be somebody in the lab for in-person lab. It's not going to be a Zoom lab. Okay. Uh, very important. Uh, there's going to be, as I uh, explained earlier, there's a programming examination. The programming examination is going to be administered in the lab on week 12. Okay, so very important. Of course, I'm going to remind that to you as we go. The uh, For the assignments and the project, uh, of course, anybody that has some experience uh, doing software development knows that uh, you should use uh, some kind of online repository, uh, such as GitHub or Bitbucket. I highly, highly recommend that you use it uh, for your project. Uh, please, if you know some people in your team that already know how to use that, um, <laughs> Uh, follow their lead and then uh, get get in, uh, on board of learning it. Okay, not uh, this is not one of the you know stated goals of this course. We will not teach you how to use it in the course. But if you have some people in your team that know how to use it and you don't, please uh, don't be refractory to that and take this as an opportunity to learn it. Uh, most of the companies uh, would actually use uh, repositories like this. So it's a big asset for you to actually learn that. As I explained earlier, the assignment demonstrations will be done online using Zoom. Very short presentation, you have to be prepared, you have to be very efficient, and you will be given a very clear uh, grading scheme and, and you know, list of things to demonstrate for each of the presentations. The examinations, three examinations, online written midterm, online programming final, and online written final. So all of these are administered using a, a Moodle examination. There is no formal invigilation of these examinations, though there will be a Zoom room that's going to be open during the exam if you have some questions. Uh, there's, not, it's, there's, no, there's no Zoom invigilation. There's no uh, uh, formal uh, 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 invigilation. Uh, you just basically log into this exam, and then if you need help, there's going to be some person, uh, including me, uh, in a Zoom session, if you have some questions during the exam. Uh, so when, so if you want to know the dates, please go to the uh, Moodle page or my web page. The uh, midterm is going to be on the weekend uh, after week eight. Be why on the weekend? Because there's two sections. I'm the one that has. Uh, to give both of the exams. I figured that I should have the same exam for both sections. <clears throat> uh, and both of the sections, of course, are not at the same time. Um, so the only solution to this is to have an examination on the weekend. Uh, I apology, apologies for that. Uh, no, that's not necessarily a um, good thing, but that's the only solution uh, for us here. So please go to the um, Moodle page and the web page. I believe it's on uh, October 30th. The programming final examination is going to be administered during the uh, week 12 uh, lab. 
I believe it's uh, November 24th, I believe so. Please look at the um, Moodle page for confirmation of this date. Uh, for the uh, written final examination, it's during the examination week. The date has not been set yet. Normally the date is determined by the university during uh, uh, around a little bit after the uh, mid uh, semester. This is a list of uh, books and articles that I've used over the years to uh, uh, create the material. Uh, for each of the slide sets, actually, you have a uh, bibliography at the end for the sources that I've used to uh, create the material. And more interestingly here, not that these are not interesting, but uh, you have a lot of online resources uh, related to this course. Of course, you have things like Stack Overflow, uh, lots of different tutorials that, that I particularly particularly uh, advocate uh, any of these, uh, but these are some of them that I found that were the most useful. Um, interestingly also is these uh, four uh, references, especially CPP reference, c++.com, uh, the ISO standards for C++. So if you go there, well, maybe there's a warning about this I should give you. If you go to these websites, uh, it's gonna give you extremely detailed description of the C++ language. And that's one of the things that I'm gonna try to you know, mitigate over the course. C++ is a language that is extremely uh, intricate. Okay? And then these uh, resources will give you all the absolute details uh, of everything. So if you go there, it's like, and, and let's say you might think, oh, there is a certain aspect of C++, I don't know much about it. So I'm gonna go to CPP reference. Uh, if you don't know much about CPP, uh, about C++ and you go to these websites there, it's likely that you'd just be overwhelmed, okay? Even myself, which I know much about C++, uh, of course, that sometimes I want to know more because I'm, I'm teaching the course. Uh, and very frequently I go into uh, hidden corners of CPP reference uh, and I myself get overwhelmed by uh, the complexity of the explanations that are given. So that's what I'm gonna try to do in this course, try to somehow you know, shield you for un from unnecessary complexity, what I deem as unnecessary for the course, okay? Some of you might think that I'm not going into enough details. The reality here is that we have 200 students. Uh, not all the students have the same uh, abilities and level of understanding of things. Uh, so it's, it's my duty in a course like this to uh, somehow select the level at which I'm gonna uh, go in this particular course. If I would want to go at a very high level, I would actually lose almost, uh, at least I would say half of the class, okay? People would just be overwhelmed by the complexity. So but reality also is that uh, if you want to properly understand things and be told all the details, then these references here are the place to go, okay? There is also uh, books by, by Bjarna Strustrup, uh, which is the designer and main implementers in the early days of C++. So Bjarna Strustrup is the one who designed C++ and he's very well known to be very good at explaining how it works. <clears throat> the, <laughs> and that's the same, the same thing. If you read books from Strustrup, it's going to be very informative, but it's also going to go into a lot of details. Okay, so that's why uh, in this course I'm proposing that you start with uh, simple things and that you um, don't try to delve too deep uh, into the details. And then once you're comfortable, then you try to know more. Okay, it's more likely that you will try to 
do things and then you're going to run into trouble. And when you run into trouble, then you try to understand more deeply why are these problems happening? Because that's what's going to happen to many of you that used to be good at Java uh, or are good at Java. You're going to say, oh, I'm going to learn this new language, C++. And then I'm good at Java, so I should be good in C++. And then the reality is that you're going to hit a wall at some point and you're going to think, oh, such a thing that I was doing in Java used to be simple. I used to think I knew what I was doing. But then when I try to do the same thing in C++, it doesn't work and I'm running into a lot of trouble. Yes, this is the reality of learning to use C++. And it actually happens to people that have a good experience with C++. Learning C++ is it's not easy. It's much more difficult than learning Java. So all this to say, if you are more of a beginner, then you can go to these tutorials here. In the lecture, I'm trying to be as, you know, uh, um, uh, to give you simple explanations uh, that are uh, somehow easy to understand, even though I'm going into the details of how things works in order to explain to you so that you have a good background to really understand what is happening. Okay, so I'm going to do Kind of do a balance between try to be simple, but also delve somehow into uh, the, the, the most important problems and show you how to do them properly by understand what is happening. Okay. okay, and then if you want, inevitably you're gonna run into trouble in this course or even after, after when you use C++ in real life, is is learning C++ it's, it's like a lifetime uh, journey. Okay, so I think that's about it for this. So next step is that we learn what is C++, the history of C++ and so on. That's gonna be on the next video. So that's it for this video. Thank you.